Hey everybody, Jim from RainforestStationPets.com. I'm going to do a unboxing today for a General Electric uh, LED grow light. Uh, this is 24 inch, two tubes. Um, it says it claims to use 40 watts. Um, puts out uh, a PPF, a photosynthetic photon flux of 72 micromoles per second. That's what the tube is putting out, I'm almost certain. That's not what's hitting the, hitting the ground. So we'll do a little test later and see, at least in Lux, uh, with my light meter, what we're getting. Um, let's open it up and see what we got in here. We weren't planning to use this light. Um, we just, the mini lights, uh, the mini full spectrum lights that we got aren't covering the whole shelf as well as we had hoped they would. I kind of suspected they wouldn't. So we got this just to see how the uh, the big names compare to the off brands that we got on uh, eBay, or excuse me, on Amazon. Although you can get them on eBay as well. And it's got the French directions on the outside. Okay, so here we got it. As you can see, it's a two foot bulb with surface mounted uh, LEDs. And it looks like we've got um, one red one for every two of the other ones. Uh, this is supposed to have a slightly bluer spectrum than their same lamp that's for uh, flowers and blooming. There's your typical chain mounts. Um, as a, I don't think it says how long the cord is, but I'm guessing it's about five or six feet. Let's see what we got here. Okay. Yeah, maybe about four feet, because that's where it reaches the ground right there. Uh, it does have a single on and off switch and the ability to daisy chain this with other bulbs. Um, it says eight units maximum on here. Maximum of 350 watts. So basically we've got uh, 40 watts, we're gonna test that. 25,000 hours. Maybe the off-brands are just pushing the envelope of fluffery, but uh, they're almost always 50,000. So that's a little interesting. Um, Non-dimmable, which yeah, with this you're not going to want to dim it anyway. It's not going to be that bright. Because um, if it's only putting out uh, 72 uh, micromoles per second of PPF, a lot less than that's going to be hitting the, hitting the ground. We'll test that in just a minute. According to this, um, the wavelength range, uh, for, uh, and if, if you don't know, uh, visible light is measured in nanometers. Any, everything on the all radiation on the electromagnetic spectrum is measured in wavelength. Um, light falls into a range where they need to use nanometers to uh, give you an idea of what the, the uh, wavelength is. So for this one, um, 400 to 500 nanometer range, it's putting out 12.9 micromoles per second. Uh, 500 to 600, you're, and that's blue, 400 to 500, that's, that's your blue wavelength. Um, 500 to 600 nanometer range, which is more like in our, our spectrum that we see best in green. So that's falling in the middle there. 24.2, um, 600 to 700 nanometer range, where you're getting into red, uh, 34.7, and you add those all together, so everywhere from 400 to 700 nanometers is 71.8 micromoles per second. The red-blue flux ratio is 3 to 1. Um, PPF per watt is 1.8. And these do appear white to the eye. Uh, they've got enough of the middle part of the spectrum that they, they appear pretty white to us. So we are going to plug this in and we are going to see what we've got. So stay tuned.
Okay, here you can see our test set up. Um, it is just a, yeah, just a smidge over 12 inches, about 12, yeah, maybe 12 and a half. But I've been fighting with this thing for 10 minutes trying to get it level and get it at the right height. So that's going to have to do because my boom is about at its limit uh, of what it can stand. So we've got it level. I'm going to turn it on. And we're going to move the camera around to get the close-ups of the meter and everything. Okay, let's try again. We're going to turn this on. Okay, so it's zeroed out. So now we can open it up. And ambient light in here is uh, auto range of 2000. Ambient light is about 350 lux. So we're going to turn the light on. I'm almost directly under the center of the light. Okay. So you can see it is drawn exactly 40, a little over 40 watts. Oops. So we've now jumped up to 20,000 range. And that means that's 10,000... 900, 10,800 in that vicinity. Uh, and that's directly under the bulb. So we're going to move down along the edge of the bulb here because it's got a little bit of an angle. Okay, so down here toward the end it begins to drop. You can see that. But, uh, Right in the middle, 10,800, 10,000, pushed, yep, hit 11 a couple of times there. Almost 11,000 lux. So we keep going down along the length. You can see toward the edge of the bulb it begins to drop off already. It says at a height of uh, 6 inches that you can put these about 9 inches apart with that. I don't know, you'd have to see because. I'm already down to uh, 7,000 at this end. And we'll go back here, go towards that way. And 7,900. So if we go from the middle of the bulb, uh, we're going to go outside. And surprisingly, the middle of that bulb holds at least a good six inches. Let's see. Yeah, about six inches and it drops down to 8,000. And let's turn it this way. Coming toward us. Coming out from under the bulb. So at 12 inches it gives us a good 12 inch width but not much more in length than the actual fixture itself. So that's our test of the GE 40 watt 24 inch fixture. For our new full spectrum setup, we turned our original ECRU and Roliadro LED plant grow lights perpendicular to the 18 by 48 inch shelf and we hung them 6 inches from either end. This made room to hang the GE LED plant grow light in the middle. After hanging the GE plant light, we took new meter readings which showed some benefit from the reflective mylar on three sides of the shelf.